Hello, everyone. Oh, my gosh. Technology is a wonderful thing when it works. So, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met, my name's Sharon Gleason. I'm a certified health coach. And originally, we started this group because um, I guess I kept finding that there were lots of women who um, were talking about things like hormones and menopause and so on. And sometimes it can be hard to find the time to come together as a group. So I thought I would put together a group so that we could actually share uh, more information with you and in sp sort of small chunks so that it's a little bit easier to digest. And I was really fortunate to meet Ruth, um, I think it was just over a year ago now, Ruth. Um, yeah. I've had um, the real privilege of working with Ruth and um, we've run a few workshops together which have been amazing um, and I feel really privileged actually that Ruth um, has given up her time to um, talk to us tonight in our group. So Ruth actually trained as a homeopathic doctor and complementary therapist in, she's actually originally from South Africa but I think you did your training in the UK, is that right Ruth? Um, I did my complementary therapies in the UK and my um, homeopathy in South Africa. Okay. Great. So a little bit different than in Australia. So Ruth is actually um, over there is a doctor that's not recognised here for some unknown reason, but she is honestly an absolute wealth of knowledge. So we're really lucky to have her sharing with us tonight. So she's also written four health-related textbooks that are used in health colleges worldwide, including the book of Anatomy, Physiology and Pathology for Healthcare Professionals. Uh, and also um, you write the, um, the books for the reflexologist, don't you, Ruth? Yeah. yeah, so pretty amazing. Um, and I've seen her books and honestly, they are incredible. So Ruth really helps people um, identify and rectify the underlying causes of tiredness, whether it's maybe due to poor immunity, um, infections, hormonal problems such as thyroid issues, menopause or period problems, and also, you know, gut issues, dis um, autoimmune disorders and long-term long -term stress and trauma. So, so she's incredibly experienced and she's going to share a little bit tonight just to help us understand more about our hormones, how they work and what we can do to try and keep them healthy. So thank you so much, Ruth. Um, over to you. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Thanks very much. And hi, everybody. Um, I am just going to move my screen a little bit. So excuse me looking. OK, so these are just some pictures of my books. Um, and Sharon's given me a lovely introduction. So thank you, Sharon. I won't, won't talk about myself anymore. Before I start, I just want to put in a little disclaimer here. Everything that I say tonight, everything Sharon and I discuss is for general educational purposes only. It's for your interest. Um, it does not replace a medical diagnosis and it does not replace medical treatment. So please, that's really, really important. It's just for your interest. Okay, so I'm going to talk about hormones. Sharon's asked me to talk about specifically about women's hormones. And I'm just going to give a brief introduction, mainly of the just a couple of hormones. We've got so many hormones in our body. Um, hormones are little chemical messengers. They're carried in the blood. They're secreted by a gland, for example, your adrenal glands or your pituitary gland or your ovaries. And these hormones are secreted by a gland carried in the blood to target cells where they act on the cells and they cause changes in the cells. Um, and there's loads and loads and loads of different hormones, but I'm just going to talk about the few female hormones that really, really impact us as women. And um, unfortunately cause a lot of chaos and a lot of strife for many of us. The two main female hormones are estrogen and progesterone. And these are the hormones um, that make us women. They're the hormones that give us lovely big boobs, big hips, soft skin, um, sort of more long hair rather than hair on our chins. Um, so they, they give us our feminine sexual characteristics. Um, we call them secondary se sexual characteristics as well. Well, they make us feminine, feminine they make us women. Um, they both play an integral role in our menstrual cycle, in our ability to reproduce, to have children, and they affect our periods as well. So I will talk a little bit more about that just now. Oestrogen is also a really important hormone for the strength of our bones. Um, oestrogen is called an 
anabolic hormone, um, which means that it builds in our body. So it helps build our bones and keeps them very strong. It's also um, protective of, of the heart. So it's cardioprotective. It, it protects your heart. It um, plays an important role in your cardiovascular health. And it also is important for your um, mental health and for uh, the neurotransmitters in your brain. So that's estrogen. Estrogen is produced by your ovaries and it is usually released um, or it peaks. I mean, it, we have it in our bodies all the time, but it peaks when we ovulate. So when um, each month, generally about two weeks before your period, if you've got a perfect, <laughs> if you've got a perfect timing of your period, um, your ovaries release a lot more estrogen. That's when it really peaks. And um, I'll talk in a minute. I've got a nice slide about problems with too much estrogen. Progesterone is the other female hormone. It works with estrogen. So they really need to balance each other out. And the ratio of your estrogen and progesterone is very, very important. Progesterone is um, also produced by your ovaries. And again, it functions in your reproductive health. It is usually... Um, at its peak in the second half of your um, of your menstrual cycle. So once you ovulate and your body releases a little egg, your ovaries release a little egg, then your uh, progesterone levels go up to help your womb or your uterus prepare for implantation, prepare for you to have a, have a baby, basically. So progesterone is very important in the second half of your menstrual cycle. Um, it also acts a lot on breast tissue um, and the development of your breasts. It helps to maintain pregnancy. So when you're pregnant, it's, it's a key hormone as well. It also works on your um, heart, well, your cardiovascular system, specifically the vessels. And it also is key to your mental health. So straight away, just by knowing the um, functions of estrogen and progesterone, I'm sure you can see what sort of things can go wrong when we don't have the right amount of them in our body. I mean, we all as women, um, unless you're very, very lucky and you have a perfect menstrual period, um, but a lot of us women have problems with brain fog, with mood swings. Um, that's our estrogen and progesterone levels. Um, I'll actually just talk about it in the next slide. So in the slide, I um, have just got a few images of when we have too much estrogen in our body or too little estrogen in our body. And what I want you to remember is that if you have um, estrogen dominance, which is too much estrogen, you're going to have too little progesterone. Um, so th the key here is the balance, the ratio of the hormones. If you have too much progesterone, you're going to have too little estrogen, except in certain circumstances. So I'll just go through them. Estrogen um, is peak for peaks at ovulation. It's really, really important in our um, reproductive cycle. And it actually decreases with menopause. And the way we know we've gone through menopause is when we have minimum um, or minimal levels of estrogen. Um, I must just clarify quickly, I should have done this earlier, but the term estrogen is actually a, a um, like an umbrella term, we have different estrogens in our body. We, there's about six different estrogens in our body. There's three main ones that are important in our um, in our cycle, and um, estradiol, which is um, E2, is the one that is key in our reproductive health, and that is what really um, sort of becomes minimal with menopause. So. Estrogen deficiency occurs with menopause. It also occurs if you are underweight. Um, if after, estrogens, it, it's quite a, quite a fascinating. Our, our bodies are, are beautiful. So our ovaries produce estrogen. Once we've gone through menopause, our ovaries stop producing estrogen. But we still need small amounts of estrogen in our body. So our adrenal glands produce a little bit and our fat cells produce estrogen. So they are um, they become quite an important source of estrogen post-menopause. So women who um, are struggling with fertility 
issues and they're very, very thin, it could be because their body's not producing enough estrogen. So if you are underweight, if you lose weight suddenly, like rapidly, for example, if you've got a, a, a health problem, perhaps cancer, something like that, and you have a sudden loss of weight, or extreme loss of weight, or well, if you over-exercise, um, you do far too much exercise. We see this a lot in um, athletes um, and long distance runners, women. They struggle to fall pregnant because their estrogen levels are low because um, they are over exercising. And stress can also bring your estrogen levels right down. Um, it can also bring them up. <laughs> so you'll see in, in, when I get to the, the bottom half of the, of the slide. Right. But, so, so to interrupt just quickly, um, you keep talking about the ratio of um, estrogen mm -hmm. and progesterone. Is it meant to be 50-50 or is it, does it no. sort of vary or? No. To be honest, I don't know offhand what it is. When we send for blood tests, we always get given um, the brackets in which the ratio is meant to be. So I can't actually tell you offhand. I could look it up quickly. That's okay. Um, we could put it in the group of it, if anyone knows. We could put it in tomorrow, but it's not fifty-fifty. It is in a specific ratio. Yeah. Okay. Um. So estrogen deficiency. When you have low estrogen, you're going to have signs of menopause. For example, hot sweats, um, hot flushes, mood swings, a lot of um, urinary tract problems, urinary tract infections, thrush. You're more prone to heart disease. So once you've gone through menopause, for example, um, you become at a higher risk of developing um, cardiovascular disease, as well as osteoporosis. Estrogen is very, very protective of your bones. It builds your bones. And once you've gone through menopause, that's where we see a lot of problems with osteoporosis um, because you don't have such high levels of estrogen anymore. So you can see how important estrogen is. And if you have too little, what it can do to your body. But at the same time, if we have too much estrogen, and um, this is known as estrogen dominance or estrogen excess, and often here you have low progesterone, um, the most common cause of, there's quite a few com common causes of estrogen dominance actually, but one of the biggest is um, stress. When you are under a lot of stress, your body produces hormone cortisol, and cortisol can cause much higher levels of stress, but it could of, of estrogen, but it will also um, lead to lower levels of progesterone, and that's when you get the estrogen dominance. So stress plays a huge role in your um, hormonal health, as does um, obesity. If you're overweight, like I said earlier, your fat cells, your adipose cells, they actually produce estrogen. So um, this image of this lady here with the big belly, if, you, if you're if you carrying a lot of excess um, fat, especially around your waistline, then your body will be producing a lot more estrogen than you really need. So that could lead to estrogen dominance. Problem is one of the symptoms of estrogen dominance is an difficulty to lose weight. Um, so it becomes a, a vicious circle. It's really horrible. If you are carrying excess weight, you are more prone to estrogen dominance. If you have estrogen dominance, you're more prone to having excess weight. So it just becomes a horrible, nasty little vicious circle. Um, the next image, it was quite difficult to find good images for this um, webinar. The next image is trying to portray a uh, breast tenderness breast pain, breast, breast swelling, fibrocystic breasts, um, that is with estrogen dominance. Usually you'll have that when you ovulate as opposed to just before your period. Um, if you have very low progesterone um, or very high progesterone as well, you will have problems with your breasts. So it is difficult to tell the difference sometimes between estrogen dominance or um estrogen deficiency. So it's very important to get a blood test. Don't self-diagnose. Um, so breast problems, breast tenderness, fibrocystic breasts, you know, often women before their cycle, they get a lot of little lumps in their breasts, a lot of pain. Um, some women actually go up a bra size every menstrual cycle. Um, the woman in the middle of the slide is how I'm sure we all feel 
before our periods or at some stage in your cycle, um, terrible mood sw swings, terrible PMS, you've got to look at um, that estrogen progesterone ratio again. And um, it's with estrogen dominance, it's not so much your um, urinary problems or your urinary tract infections, it's more period problems, heavy, heavy periods, painful periods, lots of big clots as well. And acne or skin problems also occurs with estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance is really common with um, in perimenopause. So when you are, say, in your 40s, um, we see it a, a lot. So, I don't know, 40s onwards, actually. There's sort of six, six to even 10 years before menopause, estrogen dominance seems to just like, cause a lot of problems. It's also very common in um, people who have too many toxins in their body. So that's Sharon's speciality, Sharon's area. Um, you know, if you have too many, um, well, Sharon can tell you a lot more about it than me, but if you have a lot of toxins in your environment, if you have a lot of toxins in your skincare products, if you eat uh, a lot of um, foods that um, have, you know, your, um, your lot fed, um, cattle and stuff like that that have a lot of hormones pumped into them but we'll leave Sharon to, to talk about that another time because she can tell you a lot more than I can so that's estrogen dominance estrogen um, deficiency and just if you um, are having any of these symptoms I've discussed don't self-diagnose because it can be so so difficult to tell the difference between them because the symptoms can overlap or be similar the best thing to do is to go to your GP and get some blood tests done. Um, you can do a, a female hormone panel. Usually it checks your um, progesterone estradiol ratio. So estradiol is a type of estrogen. Um, it's also called E2. And you really want that to be in balance, that ratio. If you are wondering if you've gone through menopause, sometimes I get women very, very, very lucky woman who come to me and they say, I, I'm like in my late 50s, I don't know if I've gone through menopause. I've never had a hot sweat. I've never had any symptoms. I just don't have my period anymore. Um, very lucky woman. Very <laughs> you, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> unusual. But um, you can, firstly, if you haven't had a period for 12 months, that means you've gone through menopause. Secondly, um, it means you're postmenopausal. Secondly, you can um, get blood tests done. Your estradiol or your E2, that type of estrogen, will be minimal. And um, your progesterone will also be low because your ovaries are no longer producing um, big amounts of estrogen or progesterone. And there's another hormone which that, um, we test for for menopause. It's called follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. And this is a hormone produced by your pituitary in your um, brain, in your head. And it causes it in a, in, in a menstruating woman, so before menopause, it's a hormone that causes your ovaries to, um, the follicles in your ovaries to develop so that they can release an egg every month. When you have gone through menopause um, and when you're going through it and you're not producing those eggs anymore because we've, you run out of eggs, <laughs> um, your body starts panicking and thinking, okay, well, I need to produce more FSH because we need to stimulate those follicles more. So your FSH goes very high for a while. So that's another way of seeing, seeing if you're menopausal. Any questions at this stage? Sharon, any questions or should I carry on? Not really. I think that that's all good to understand. I think it's going to be right. What do we do? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what do we do? <laughs> um, with hormones, it is so, 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 so vital to understand that if you have problems with your hormones, they are that's the tip of the iceberg. There will be a lot more going on underneath. There will be a lot more that you need to look at. And it breaks my heart when I see women with hormonal problems. And, for example, uh, a woman with PCOS, let's say a young girl, a teenager with PCOS, 
um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And she has symptoms of PCOS. She has um, weight problems. She has skin problems. She has hair growing where it shouldn't be growing. She has an irregular, sometimes an absent period. She um, has a lot of mood swings, a lot of food cravings, especially for carbohydrates, a lot of sugar imbalances. She goes to a GP and all she's given is um, the oral contraceptive pill. It sorts out, the, it helps with the PCOS, it helps with all those problems, but it doesn't address the underlying cause of that PCOS. And um, when she's ready to come off the pill and have, problem, have children, then we often see lots more hormonal problems. So, you know, if you want to use the pill to um, help cope with your hormonal symptoms, it, it's up to you. But always please also address the underlying problem. So hormonal problems are the tip of the iceberg. There's always other stuff going on that really, really needs to be addressed. Um, your hormones, are, well, I'm talking about your female hormones here, your reproductive hormones, they are a reflection of your general health. If you are healthy, you will have uh, healthy female hormones. Okay, so that's uh, that's really important. I'm, I'm very passionate about that. Um, so your hormones, when you're having problems with your hormones, the areas you need to look at is firstly your nutrition. First and foremost, are you eating enough food? And are you eating the building blocks of your hormones? So your female sex hormones, your estrogen and progesterone, are made from their steroid hormones, which means they are made from fats. If you don't eat good, healthy fats, your body is not going to be able to build good, healthy female hormones. <laughs> so um, this picture here, I love it. I think it's a beautiful picture of this woman with the avas. Avas are beautiful, really good, nutritious fat. So if you're having problems with your hormones, um, start eating good fats, your avas, your um, oily fish like salmon, um, sardines. Uh, nuts and seeds, olive oil, things like that. Start eating to build those hormones. Also proteins, you need a lot of good um, protein just so that your um, hormones function properly, so that all the enzymes that um, are necessary in the, in the, um, the process of, of your hormones are there. The second most important thing with hormones is your blood sugar management. Um, if you are not managing your blood sugars, if, if you are eating a lot of carbs, if you are eating too much sugar or too many refined carbs, and you are having ups and downs and energy crashes, then that's going to affect your hormones. And I'm actually um, putting on my, I've just started a YouTube channel. Um, sorry, Sharon, for the quick advert, but it's <laughs> just uh, tomorrow in my, on my YouTube channel, I'm putting up um, how to balance your blood sugar. So um, if you're having problems with your hormones, you need to learn to balance your blood sugars. And tomorrow I've got a nice little video on how to do that. Good. Um, we'll share that in the group because I think that is honestly yes. a massive one. And it's something a lot of my clients struggle with is that and it goes back to number one, <laughs> the nutrition. It's the nutrition, yes. And confusion yes. over what to eat, you know, how much to eat, you know, do we have carbs, do we have fats, you know, all that kind of thing. So, but yeah, yeah. sorry, keep going. But, but it, 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 those two are so closely linked. Yes, yes, that's it. And, and um, if you can get your eating right, if you can get your nutrition and balance your blood sugars, your hormones, will just start to balance, um, as well as if you can balance or sort out your stress, <laughs> because stress really affects your mm -hmm. blood sugars, it affects your um, cortisol, and it affects your hormones. Um, and again, Sharon and I, a few months ago, we did a really nice presentation uh, webinar on stress. So um, I'm sure Sharon can share it in the group um, of how you can actually sort of start coping with your own stress at home um, the last two things that are very very important in having healthy female hormones is your digestive system you've got to be able to um, digest to break down and to absorb the all those healthy nutritious foods that you're eating and you've got to have a nice healthy gut microbiome if your microbiomes 
um, if you've got an overgrowth of the wrong type of bacteria, you're always going to have problems as well. Um, those are different different topics, they're huge topics. Um, maybe we can cover them at, a, at another stage. And last but not least are your organs of elimination and specifically your liver, because your liver metabolizes your metabolizes estrogen it breaks estrogen down when you have excess estrogen in your body and it eliminates it into um, bile and bile goes um, into your um, stool so um, by having regular um, stool movements every day and by having a good healthy liver you are getting rid of that excess estrogen if you are constipated and you don't pass the stool every day if you um, have a liver that's not functioning optimally, so here we go back to too many toxins and overburdening your system with toxins, um, then your liver can't process, uh, can't break down the estrogen, your body can't get rid of it, and it just becomes a, a it just cycles in your blood, all that excess estrogen, that dirty old used up estrogen just keeps going around and causes lots of havoc. So that's... Um, those are things you, you guys really need to look at at home. Um, it's what you eat, it's your blood sugars, it's your um, stress, uh, your digestive system and your organs of elimination. That's interesting how many of those are linked because, you know, I talk a lot about the stress and the digestion link too because half of, you know, the equation is what you eat but if you are in that stress state when you're eating, um, you know, your body's not focusing on digestion, it's diverting the, the blood away from digestion. So, so many of those things are interlinked and the digestion and elimination. So I think you're right, it'd be really good to do a deep dive into some more of these as well, Ruth. Yes, yes, Thanks. yeah. And um, also that um, webinar we did on, on stress, I think is so, so important for, for just <laughs> starting to get to grips with, with your health. <laughs> Yeah, I know so, I definitely didn't take stress as, seri as seriously as I needed to until I met you, to be honest. <laughs> so I was like, oh, what's that? Who cares? But I now yes. fully understand the massive impact that it has on, on our hormones, on our digestion, yeah. on our sleep, on our energy levels, everything. Yeah, you know, it's, it's frightening. So I, um, I struggled with burnout and fatigue for about 10 about 10 years I've really struggled and so I work with people who struggle with exhaustion and it you know they they always have hormonal problems it's, or most of the time there's thyroid problems I'm going to talk briefly about the thyroid now there's always digestive problems IBS those kind of things uh, but they're all linked by stress stress is where every <laughs> everything begins and unfortunately it's mm. It's not always the easiest thing to deal with, but um, yeah, that's that's what Sharon's here to to help help you with as well is, is how to cope with stress. You, you cope with your stress, everything else sort of just falls into line. Mm. So little I'm just steps, to, isn't that Ruth? little steps, <laughs> little steps, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm going to just talk very very quickly because um, I don't want to take too much time, but very briefly about your thyroid gland because it's. Thyroid hormones are the other um, hormones that really affect us women, and especially um, I know this group of Sharon's is mainly for women over 40. And um, so the, I think the majority of women over 40 who come to me with hormonal problems or with um, fatigue and exhaustion and sleeping problems, with weight problems, it generally boils down to their thyroid and when I very 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 first started off in natural health um so over 20 years ago um we were taught that your thyroid is um your third ovary so you don't have two ovaries you have three um, your two two reproductive ones and your thyroid and your thyroid is um it's it's an amazing that it's shaped it's here in your neck it's shaped like a little butterfly. And I um, just think if you have the idea of this beautiful little butterfly fluttering all over your body, um, bringing energy to every cell in your body, your thyroid acts on every cell in your body, every tissue in your body is affected by 
um, the health of your thyroid gland. It's affected by your thyroid hormones. So you've got this little butterfly that just um, flutters throughout your body and affects your whole body. Um, your thyroid is um, it, it's responsible for metabolism, for the way your body breaks down food, for the way your body builds energy. So if you're struggling with fatigue, you've got to look at your thyroid. It's uh, vital for your um, for your growth and development. So we see a lot of thyroid problems in in kids and teenagers. Um, it's vital for your sexual maturation as, as well. Um, if you are struggling with fertility, if you cannot fall pregnant, you need to look at your thyroid. Um, it re helps regulate your heart rate, your breathing rate, your um, consumption of oxygen, the way your cells use oxygen. It's vital for your sleep. It's vital for your mental health. Um, and I love this image as well because it is the missing piece in the puzzle of women's health conditions. If you have um, a menstrual problem or if you're really, really struggling with menopause, get your thyroid levels checked. Um, thyroid problems always come up when there are big hormonal changes. So puberty, pregnancy, and menopause are when the thyroid loves to misbehave. <laughs> um, just a few pictures just showing what can go wrong with the thyroid. Um, if you remember, it's a butterfly. If you chop off one of its wings, so it's out of balance, there's going to be problems. If you have um, an overactive thyroid, you will have a lot of problems, a lot of anxiety, heart palpitations, uh, muscle weakness in your legs. Uh, period problems, fertility problems, um, and you have to get it sorted out. It's not something, uh, uh, overactive thyroid, hyperthyroidism is not something you can treat at home. You do need to go to a, a doctor, a functional medicine doctor, um, you need to get it sorted properly. Uh, underactive thyroid is really, really common, especially after you've had babies. Um, the picture of the dog, I had lots of problems with my thyroid after having my babies. I used to look like that in the mornings. I would wake up with puppy, puppy eyes. <laughs> and, and so many women come to me and they are so tired and they wake up and they say, I wake up and I've just got these puppy, puppy eyes. And that's often an underactive thyroid. Um, the other image just says, if you cannot lose weight, no matter how much you change your diet, no matter how much you exercise, you are just still putting on weight. If you're losing your hair, um, so hair loss or very dry hair, very dry skin, um, that fluid retention, puffiness, depression, anxiety, um, no energy, um, constipation as well. That's... Um, all underactive thyroid. With an overactive thyroid, you can get a lot of diarrhea and anxiety as well. So you can see how this hormone really, really influences us. Um, the test you need to go for, I actually think uh, once uh, every woman should just have their thyroid checked regularly, preferably once a year if you can, once you've had your babies. Um, when you go for your thyroid tests, you can go to a GP, you can go to a naturopath, you can come to a, a, a homeopathic doctor. You know, there's a, a lot of people you can go to to have your thyroid checked. If you go to your GP, ask them to check your antibodies. Most GPs just do the T, TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone, and they check the levels of um, your thyroid hormones. But these um, only show problems when you've had a had a when you've got a lot of symptoms that have developed your antibodies show up um can often show up years before the other symptoms do so get your antibodies checked as well um and there's a lot of different ways of um sort of coping with thyroid problems a lot of people say that there um, is no cure there's no help there is a lot that can be done um, we can talk about that at, at another time as well. Um, so uh, I do homeopathy. Um, homeopathy works beautifully with menstrual problems, with menopause, with thyroid problems. Um, my special interest is people who have fatigue and burnout. And um, just Most a little advert of myself. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, 
I'm getting Sharon always tells me I'm not very good at advertising myself, but um, you can find me at ruthhull.com if you um, subscribe to my newsletter. I send out a newsletter every week. I do a live um, video, always talking about topics mainly to do with fatigue and exhaustion. So that's me. Thank you, Sharon. She's amazing. And I mean, I wouldn't bring anyone on here that, you know, I wouldn't personally use their services. Um, and I mean, I, I, I'll be open. I was actually pretty lucky. Well, not lucky. I went through menopause at 44. And I do remember going, oh, my God, like, what is wrong with me? I remember I had heart palpitations. And then I, once I started getting the hot flushes, I knew that was it. And I mean, this is like 10 years ago. Um, and I obviously didn't know Ruth then, but I didn't want to go to the GP and sort it. So I actually, I had already used a Chinese doctor to fall pregnant and help me through some issues with that, with fertility and so on. Um, and honestly, I, I think it was the best thing ever to actually use a natural approach to get through it. But you need, I think you need help. Uh, and yes. some people are going to choose different things. But I just know for myself personally, I mean, I've used you a number of times now for different mm -hmm. things. And Honestly, I would definitely go homeopathy route now. I Thanks. would really recommend it. And and I think it's worth it. I mean, you know, if you and, – and I think that's the thing too. We often just struggle too long. And just listening to what you were saying about getting your yeah. thyroid checked every year, it's not that you need to necessarily wait until you're really struggling or you're at your wit's end to go and get it checked. Um, it, it's probably exactly. a good idea just to get it checked. Quite, I would have never thought to do that. Like I would mm -hmm. have thought that's like a last resort. So I think it's good for people to hear that, you know, if you're struggling, just go get some tests. At least that way then you know what you're dealing with. And then you can bring those results to either your GP or your naturopath yeah. or your homeopath and then discuss, you know, what is the best way. But I must admit yes. I've been blown away by how good the results have been that I've had from homeopathy. And I love the fact that it's yeah. it's so natural. And it, to be honest, um, you know, it's not as expensive as you know, some of the other, yeah. you know, other natural therapies, you know, in terms of remedy. And it, it wasn't laborious either. It was drops Thank of you. something. Yeah, <laughs> drops like, of little things. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. Really, yeah. I noticed a big difference both times. So, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Great. And I, I think... Um, you know, as, as women, we tend to just keep struggling and keep suffering and keep pushing on, really? thinking, oh, it's just in my mind, or I'm fat because I'm eating too much, or, oh, I'm depressed because I'm tired, or, oh, my boobs keep being sore, oh, it's just my hormones. But, you know, you can change these things and you can sort them out, and, and it sh you shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't be pushing through we shouldn't be struggling um you can go to your gp get these simple simple very inexpensive blood tests and and you can see what's going on in your body and then get help go to go to a homeopath go to a naturopath go to ask your gp there's some amazing gps out there who can really help you don't always have to have medication you can if, if you need it you can have it um, there's so much you can do. What I recommend, though, is if you are really struggling and your blood tests show problems, don't try and treat yourself. Mm. Get some help. A, a Chinese medicine doctor, an acupuncturist, reflexologist, you know, there's so herbalists. There's so many different avenues. But you need to go to somebody who is trained and who can help you. Um, I think you're wasting money by going into a... a a shop and buying three hundred dollars <laughs> worth of supplements and you know and herbs that you don't know what you're doing when actually you probably just need one or two herbs that will yes change I've stood you. there and looked at all those uh, the growing <laughs> array of um, yeah. multivitamins and things in supermarkets and pharmacies and so on and I just stand there and think you could pick twenty five of those things and think yes. that they're all going to help you and you know. That, that's just crazy like it's yeah. there's absolutely no way and then it's also you're not sure how those things are going to combine which that's a whole nother topic but do you, yes. do you know what I think also Ruth is that a lot of people like we, we say that we, we suffer for a long time but a lot of the time people don't make the time and I know I've been guilty of this yeah. as well um, I did it recently about having a mammogram it's about making it a priority and yeah. saying I'm going to go and do this one little thing because we get so busy with work and yeah. the kids and family and cleaning the house and all the rest of it that 
something as simple as saying, you know what, I'm going to go to the doctor, make yeah. an appointment, can actually get pushed to the bottom of the list. And we, we, we're we still trying to give, 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 give. So we need to actually stop, put ourselves at the top of the list and make it a priority. And if you take nothing else out of this school tonight, you know, if you're struggling, just maybe just make that one commitment um, to yourself that you'll actually go and get some tests done and, you know, get some help if that's what you need. Yes, I um, had, I was chatting to a friend this morning, actually, and for many, for many years, she's been struggling with depression and anxiety. And she said to me, she went to her GP the other day and just did a whole load of tests and her thyroid came up. She was very, very low in iron. You know, all these things, all these things came up, which maybe she didn't need to struggle for so long. You know, they could have, these are things, your thyroid can make you very, very depressed. And it's something that can be fixed quite, quite simply. <laughs> Just one thing with female hormones and um, getting help with it. You also just have to give it time. It takes at least, at least three menstrual cycles before you see an improvement. So don't expect to go to someone get given something and feel better the next <laughs> within two weeks give it at least three months so you've got to be patient and again it's that holistic thing isn't it like we can't just also not exercise drink too much alcohol have too many toxins in our body not eat well not sleep well be under stress and think we can just go to someone like you <laughs> it drops later and we're cured it's it's got to be um, at our workshops you know we, we talk about this that there's a lot of different factors and it's about making sure that we're looking at what are the things I'm doing really well on the on that sort of spectrum or the wheel and what are the things that maybe I know, yeah, perhaps that's the one thing that I need to work on. So I think that's the other thing too is, yes, absolutely, that's part of it, but the other part is all the other things around managing stress, making yeah. sure you're getting enough sleep. That's another thing I was not guilty, that I was really guilty of, mm. making sure you're really putting good food in your body. Honestly, I cannot believe the last two clients that I'm working with within one week um one of them rang me monday morning at 9 30 and I thought oh my gosh I hope everything's okay and she said oh my god i cannot believe the difference in my energy levels just by changing the way she was eating and also making sure that the food that she was putting in her body was actually really full of nutrients and not just yes. filler food you know so there's a lot that we can actually also do to help ourselves as well yeah. so yeah, yeah. great yeah. Thank you so much, Ruth. Um, I learned heaps tonight. I always do um, when I spend time with you. And I think there's some other topics that we can, you know, touch on down the track. But um, I noticed Adriana's watching and there was a couple of people watching in the group. So thanks for jumping on. And if anyone yeah. does have any questions or, I mean, obviously, you know, we can think of things that we can share and I listen to, you know, what I hear people asking about. But if there's anything specific that you'd love to know more about, please let us know because um, this is a group designed to help you know, help you. So we'd love to know if you'd like Ruth, for example, to talk more about a particular topic or you've got yeah. questions that you'd like to raise. We'd love to do that, wouldn't we, Ruth? Yes. Yeah. I, I love I love talking as you may have noticed. <laughs> no, it. You know, you've got <laughs> so much knowledge. Um and you make it really easy for people to, you know, hormones and that's quite a complex issue. And I love that you always make things really simple for people to understand. So yes. thank you so much for giving up your time for us. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks um for those that have managed to jump yeah. on and please let us know any questions. Get in touch with Ruth if you've got any questions at all. And um yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you and good night, guys. Thanks. Thanks, so all right. Thanks Sharon. Bye. Bye.